Welcome to the Be That Healing Girl podcast, and it's a holiday bonanza. If you're catching this episode, you're actually needing to catch up on the first episode because this episode is part two of a holiday survival guide for all of my anxiously attached girlies who have relationship anxiety, and you're in the right place if that's you because I got you, boo. And you want to catch the first episode because that episode is all about if why isn't he inviting me to meet his parents and should he meet my parents and the whole overthinking spiral that can happen with meeting each other's parents and this episode is all about spending time apart and the communication is not on point and you're feeling the distance so if you're in that boat then you're in the right place and if you didn't know I'm your host Claire and I love helping anxious girlies who are high achieving who are doing great everywhere else Accept your love life. I've got you. So if that's you, we're on the same page. And make sure to stick around towards the end because I always drop the hot tips towards the end. And today's hot tip is really about a suggestion that I still use to this day in my relationship when I know that we're going to be apart or that the communication could be a little funky. I use this every time. All right. So make sure to stick around for that. And because it's the holiday season and I'm feeling gracious and maybe you're feeling like a giving, a giving season or feeling too, then I'm holding a contest. So if you subscribe, when you subscribe and leave a review on Apple, Spotify, or YouTube, then I'll be gifting that special person a special VIP one-on-one coaching session with me and we'll talk all things your relationship, what's working, what's not, how to work through your anxiety and it's really a special gift because number one, it's valued at $250 and also I really love diving in with each and every one of you. So one person's going to get that, make sure to subscribe and review and let's dive in, shall we? So let's talk about time apart, all right? This is, mm, I'll be honest, and you podcast girlies are getting the real deal because I, I want this, I want you to feel my heart in this, that I understand how hard it can be when you spend time apart, all right? And if you didn't know, my husband was avoidant. I was definitely anxiously attached Not only that, but we lived long distance-ish. We lived about 75 minutes apart from each other. And we also just had a really tumultuous time. Not one, but two years of our very first two years together. It was really tumultuous because we had all these things that we had to work through with the distance and the attachment styles and him healing through a divorce. All of it was happening, okay? So I know from experience how tough it is when you're spending a holiday apart. Now, I'll also say that when my husband and I were at our first holiday, when we were at that place in our relationship, we were six months in. And I don't know if you know this, but that is very fresh. (laughs) Now that I have tenure and experience in a relationship, six months, I love you, is nothing. It's, It's just nothing in the drop of the bucket. And It's like a a sprout, like you plant a seed and a sprout is coming up. Six months is very, very fresh. That little sprout is just peeking its head out there. So our relationship was very fresh and tumultuous. We were working through a lot together, all right? So I just say this with so much love. I understand how hard time apart is. Now, I will also say that because we were six months in, I wanted to take as much pressure off of both of us as we could. And I just said, I'm going to go to Virginia to see my family and you stay in Colorado where his family was. So I took, I imposed the time apart. Now, I don't think I knew this at the time, but that was so emotionally mature. I wanted to not put that pressure on myself, on him, and Somehow, intuitively, I trusted my gut that doing it together and putting that pressure was not going to be good for either of us. It would have been too intense and too much at the cost of it being hard for me and me feeling the anxiety. I knew that in the long run that it was actually better for us. So if you're in this place where you actually have a choice I encourage you, this is a big flex of emotional maturity to actually look at what's important for your relationship. Like, think about the marathon and not the sprint. 
All right. So I opted for the time apart. Now, I'm saying this was emotionally mature of me, but I'll be honest, I was not feeling that emotionally mature because when it when the holiday came around, I left right before Christmas. We celebrate Christmas. If you don't, I totally understand. I love you. I see you. All all re- religions and beliefs are welcome here. But we celebrate Christmas. I left right before Christmas Eve. I was at my family's, and th- that holiday went great. The real kicker happened on New Year's Eve, all right? So this is a really powerful example of making assumptions and having expectations and not communicating them at all, all right? So I'm on East Coast time. I'm in Virginia. He is in Colorado, all right? So I'm watching, I'm getting ready to watch the ball drop. And I realized that I did not explicitly tell him that, hey, it'd be nice if you called me. Like I just almost was setting him up for failure by not communicating and withholding from him. So at that point, I'm watching the ball drop. It's East Coast time, three, two, one, woohoo, no call. 12.05, 12.10, 12.15, no phone call. And I am upset. All right. My anxious attachment is kicked in. I feel abandoned. I feel upset. And so I take a moment. I gather myself and I actually call him. And I basically let him know he was out partying, having a good old time. And I basically let it let basically let him know (laughs) words are hard that that wasn't okay. And it meant a lot to me. And I was hurt that he didn't give me a call. And we'll talk about this later. Now, that's, and that's just the real truth. That's actually what happened. So I know that doesn't sound great. And I also think it's important to share with you because looking back and looking at how we navigated that, navigated that because it wasn't perfect. Believe me, I know it wasn't perfect. But I look back at what was important and actually how that situation in the long run made us better. And I'll start by saying that the Gottman Institute and the Gottmans are this amazing, they're a couple actually, and they studied couples, that this is like their thing. This is what they do. They research couples. And one of the things they talk about is a couple's ability, a successful, healthy, long-lasting couple's ability to make it to the to however long they want to go forever and ever is based on how they repair okay straight up it's not that they don't fight it's not that they, that they avoid fighting it's really about the fact can they repair and I look back now knowing that at that situation and even though it was rough we had to I had to have some real conversations with him I had to get vulnerable which for me it was so that was so hard and so scary and so edgy to tell him that it hurt when he didn't think of me on New Year's that I was upset because old Claire would have been too cool for school no big deal oh play it off no 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 which is also very different than me pointing my finger at him and blaming him and shaming him and and just projectile vomiting all my shame and guilt and my abandonment issues on him so I I share this because I look back and it wasn't easy it was not ideal but we did it and I say this because that that example that instance of us spending time apart was so powerful and potent in us being able to pave the way in healthy repair in our relationship now I'm not wishing this on you (laughs) All right. And of course, I'm going to share what you can do so that you can maintain as much closeness and intimacy as possible when you're apart. But I say this because I want you to really hear that relationships aren't perfect. And when we expect perfection from our relationships, we are only setting ourselves up for failure because that's not the reality. The research shows that successful couples aren't the ones that don't fight. They're not the ones that don't have conflict. They're not the ones that are you know always in harmony that's just that's not reality but healthy couples learn how to repair and so whatever happens with this time apart right you get to really feel into and work through whatever happens in your relationship I it's a blessing 
at the time, it doesn't feel great, but I promise you it's a blessing to be able to learn how to repair, how to communicate, how to get vulnerable, how to express, how to get on the same page, all right? Now, that's one piece. Now, I want to talk about communication, all right? And not just communication like he isn't texting you or you're not talking a lot. The key here, like I just said, is to get vulnerable with him, right? And to let that person know what it means to you to communicate. Now, I say this, all right? I say this, like, of course, you are absolutely communicating and saying what you feel and your fears is important. But this thing that I see go wrong with anxious girlies, and I love you, I love you so much, but then you attach expectation, that I, I've made a request, and if you don't follow my request, all is lost, and I'm giving you an ultimatum now. And in the middle of that, of I'm making a request, you have all the right to make requests, but at the same time, it's, it doesn't have to be fulfilled. I'll be honest. It doesn't, it's up to the other person to fulfill that, right? And then I noticed that the girlies that make requests and then it doesn't happen, they give ultimatums and then they block people and then they break up and then three months later they unblock. I love you. If that's you, like stick around. Maybe you'll, you know, learn something different. But you can see that's a whole, that's, that's a vacillating spectrum. It's black and white. And really having boundaries is a dance. It's a tango. It's feeling out, understanding it's not going to be perfect. And truthfully, I will say that looking back at that instance, that first holiday apart, my vulnerability was, I mean, it was, it's been truly an exercise because vulnerability was something that was never safe for me with people that I loved to, to be able to say how I felt. It was never really safe. So if that, that feels scary for you, I feel you. And I look back at that pivotal point in my relationship and it was so important that I actually said what was scary without trying to manipulate without expecting this tall order to be filled or that if he didn't do it that was it all right there's a middle ground here which is why I teach my clients this one-on-one I teach my programs but I want to give you that taste here so the other piece that I want to say is your, your boundaries around this, right? And I, I hear this a lot. I have needs. I need him to call me. And like, I love you. And we have to, like, can we talk about needs? I feel like that's a totally different episode. But that when we set boundaries with people, it's actually, and when I set that boundary with Craig, for example, I realized it was less about Craig and it was more about me and what I, what was an alignment for me. And so I just say that for you because if you are struggling with having a good, strong sense of self, if you are struggling with your self-esteem, being able to set boundaries is going to be harder, all right? I'll, I'll say that because I've been there and I've been able to work and heal that and help my clients to do that. But this is why I feel when time apart, that's like the first domino. But when we don't have a strong sense of self, when we are struggling with our self-esteem, that actually makes it hard to put healthy boundaries down and also expressing yourself because you're just not used to that. So really sit with what is an alignment for you when you're communicating. What are you asking? Is it reasonable? Is it doable? And I also want to say how flexible are you with that? Because just because you have a need doesn't always mean somebody's going to be able to meet that. And I also just want to say in my marriage, I can tell you for sure, we, we are, first of all, we both have needs. He has certain needs and I have certain needs. And the truth is not every day can I give him a hundred percent. Not every day can he give me a hundred percent. It's more like I'm doing 60, he's doing 40. Some days he's doing 60, I'm doing 40. And that's the tango and the dance with relationships. It's not always going to be Everybody give 110% because that's not reality. That's not sustainable, all right? So during this time apart, during this communication, here's the hot tip. And again, I I will say that I use this to this day when I know that something is coming up where we're going to be apart or 
there's there's just things happening where we need to be on the same page and that is come up with a schedule all right come up with a schedule and that might mean so say for example your family has a tradition like you open presents on Christmas Eve and maybe his family doesn't do that so it it starts with communication hey my family has this tradition I probably won't be able to talk on on Christmas Eve you and maybe he says or they say I open Christmas with my family on Christmas Day traditionally. Okay, now you're on the same page. So now you get to communicate and come up with a schedule. Do you want to talk before I open presents on Christmas Eve? Can you talk what time on Christmas Day? Getting a schedule down, I know that seems, if you're a people pleaser, that seems edgy because you actually have to talk and say what you need and talk about what's on the plan for them. So I encourage this because that way you see that you're on the same page. You get to see where you can match up versus having these expectations that are just kind of floating out there and nobody's on the same page because you're not actually on the same schedule. You're not talking about it, all right? So I highly recommend to communicate, to get a schedule down. And I also want to say this because I know my girlies, all right? Just because it's on a schedule, schedules change, all right? And we have, as anxious girlies, get really upset when plans change. And I just want to say this with love. Plans do change. Plans do change. People come to the house late. Opening presents can happen later. It just, it happens. So even if you come up with a schedule, remember to be flexible, to be gracious. It's giving season. (laughs) Give some grace. All right? So just keep that in mind. And be gentle with the whole process as you're learning this. Be gentle with yourself. And be, yeah, be kind. It's it, give in the giving season, all right? So that wraps up this episode. And last thing that I want to say, I'm feeling like these episodes could use some mm, advice column vibes. And if you want to send in your story, it'll be totally anonymous but if you feel frisky and you would love some to send in your article, you can send me a DM on Instagram and Instagram only. It's easier on Instagram, but send me your story. And if it's a good fit, I'll share it on the podcast and read your story out loud. You'll be totally anonymous, but I'd love to just add that element here. So if that feels fun to you, you can submit your, your story and we'll play with them on the podcast. So happy holiday to you and yours. I believe in you. Be gentle and see you soon.